G'day! Here's a very famous classic puzzle that's very strange and mighty curious. Now it goes as follows. I wrote it out here. My handwriting is really bad, so I'll read it to you as well. So one day a woman decides to go on a three mile walk. She's going to be very precise. She's going to go on a very precise regimented walk. In fact, she's going to start by heading south for exactly one mile. So she walks south, admiring the sunshine, the beautiful breeze on her face, having a grand old time going walking one mile south. And then once she's walked that one mile, she's going to turn 90 degrees, exactly 90 degrees, to head east for one more mile. So she went south for a mile, and now she's going to go east for a mile. And then she admires the scenery around her, looks at all the plants and fauna, and whatever's around her, she admires it, has a grand time looking at everything she sees. And then after she's walked one mile east, she's going to turn another 90 degrees, exactly 90 degrees, to head north for one mile. One mile south, one mile east, and then north one mile, having a lovely time on this wondrous walk of hers. Then, shockingly, surprisingly, after that third mile, she finds herself back where she started, back home where she started. And here's the question. What was the color of the bear she saw on her walk? Whoa, bear, bear, what bear? There's no mention of a bear. In fact, this whole puzzle doesn't make any sense. Think about it, what did this woman do? She walked a mile south for exactly one mile, then she turned east this way, 90 degrees for exactly one mile, then she turned north this way for exactly one mile, and apparently ended up back where she started? That's impossible. And there's no mention of bears. What color was the bear she saw on her walk? Hmm. Well, it turns out, this puzzle does have an answer. It's a very famous puzzle, you may have seen it before. There is a place on Earth where you can walk one mile south, one mile east, one mile north, and end up back where you started. Can you figure out where it is? In fact, let me draw the Earth so you can see the Earth. Here's the Earth. Duh, 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 duh. Here's the equator. Duh, 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 duh. Let me just choose a country at random so you know, you know it's the Earth. There's a, there's a lovely picture of the Earth. Imagine she started this walk at the North Pole right up there, right at the North Pole. Because then she walks south, by the way, every direction is south from the North Pole. She can walk south for one mile, she might walk like this for one mile, great. Then she'll turn east for 90, turn 90 degrees and turn east for one mile, so it'll be like 90 degrees this way. I'll do like a little corner of a square, to mean I mean the corner of a square like 90 degrees, little quarter of a turn. Great, 90 degrees that way. And then she's walked one mile east, and then she'll turn 90 degrees again, another quarter of a turn to head up north, well, look at that. She goes head up north. Where's she heading back to? Back to the North Pole. And I can tell by symmetry that's actually uh, one mile again. will get me all the way back up to the top. Brilliant. So she must have been doing this journey at the North Pole. In which case, what bear did she see on her walk? Well, she must have saw, seen a polar bear. In which case, the color of the bear was white. She saw a white bear. Actually, there are other places on the Earth where you can do such a walk. Did you know there's actually many more answers to this puzzle than just this one up here? Look, think about this. Imagine the South Pole. Now, I can't stand at the South Pole and walk south. There is no south. It's not going to be starting at the South Pole. But imagine a circle that's just a perimeter of just one mile. So I'll do a circle of perimeter one mile around the South Pole. And then what you have to do is start anywhere north of that circle. Because when you walk one mile south, you'll go to your circle one mile south. Then you go east, you'll do one mile. If I did a circle of perimeter one mile, I'll be all the way around the circle back again. So when I go one mile north, I'll be going back to start. So you can start any place one mile north of a circle around the South Pole of perimeter one mile. It would also work. In fact, there are other answers. Do a circle of perimeter half a mile. Start one mile north, because when you walk a mile east, you'll be going around that circle twice, and then back up to where you started. There's lots of places around the South Pole where you can actually do such a journey. But they can't be the answer to this puzzle because the question asked, what color bear did you see on the walk? There are no bears in the Antarctic, in which case all this must be happening up there. It must be the North Pole answer, in which case we must be talking about polar bears. Wow, wow. Okay, that is a brilliant, brilliant puzzle. But what's that got to do with the story of pencil pushing and angles? Well, let me clean the board and let me talk about pencil pushing and angles with this fabulous story. Back in a moment. Okay, let's make the woman's journey more extreme. Let's have a start at the North Pole. That's fine, the North Pole, great. But instead of just walking one mile south, let's have a walk south all the way down to the equator, all the way down. 
Then have a do that 90 degree turn, that quarter of the way turn. There we go, 90 degree turn, like the quarter of a square. And let's have it then walk a quarter of the way along the equator. Whoa, a quarter all the way around. And then when she's done that, let's then have a walk back up to the North Pole. That'll be another 90 degree turn. Beautiful. In fact, since she went a quarter of the way around the equator, this angle must be a quarter of a turn. That's another 90 degrees. So actually, we know the angles in this pink triangle. All right, look at them. 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. This pink triangle has angles adding up to 270 degrees. Angles in a triangle we saw last time were adding up to 180, but not here, not this picture. The angles add up to 270. Whoa, something strange is going on. All right, I know you want to me, I know you're going to argue, but these aren't straight lines. Obviously, you know, there's the curvature of the Earth, there's bending things around, so it's all kind of different and weird. It doesn't, it makes sense. The angles get all messed up. All right, all right, I agree with you. There's curvature going on, which is going to add some curious features to the game. But let's look what the marker says. Let's look what the marker actually says about the angles in this triangle, because we're in for a surprise and a shock and a worry, actually. So imagine this woman, when she goes for a walk, she actually has the marker on her tummy and she's going to walk like this. Walk with the marker straight in front of her. So she starts at the North Pole and she's going to walk south like this. Great, 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 great. Marker pushing straight along. Great. So the marker's starting here and it comes down. Zoom. All right. Oh, this is the wrong side effect. She's just walking what feels like straight to her. Actually, that's a good point. She will feel like she's walking in a perfectly straight line. Now, we're watching from the moon to see if she's doing something weird, but to her, she's just walked a straight line down. Then she'll turn that marker, one quarter of a turn, 90 degrees, zoom. Then she'll walk east, pushing that marker straight in front of her. It will feel straight to her. Then she'll turn the marker, quarter of a turn, 90 degrees, zoom. Then she'll turn, go straight up north. It will feel straight to her, zoom. Look what the marker did. Do you see what happened? It starts this way. We apply this amount of turning, zoom. They reply this amount of turning, zoom. They reply this amount of turning, zoom. The markers change direction. The marker says this amount of turning, this amount of turning, and this amount of turning together add up to half a turn, 180 degrees. The marker says 180. To the woman doing that walk, she feels she's walking straight. If you go outside and I say walk south, I bet it will feel like a straight line to you. So she's walking what she thinks is straight. She's walking what she thinks is straight. She's walking what she, th what she thinks is straight, and the marker will tell her the angles in that triangle add up to 180 degrees, half a turn, zoom, zoom, zoom. And we can see the marker is lying. The marker lied to her. Whoa, because that now begs the question, when I was doing triangles on this screen, we used the marker and we saw zoom, zoom, zoom. Boom, half a turn. How do we know the marker wasn't lying back then? Because I'm sure this screen isn't perfectly flat. This marker must be lying. In fact, I can actually show you the marker is always going to lie. What if I drew a triangle with extremely non-straight lines? For example, here's this weird triangle. Whoa, whoa. You would say, there's no way those lines are straight. Therefore, there's no way that these three inside angles add up to half a turn. But look what the marker is going to say. Here it goes. Apply this amount of turning. Got it memorized where the marker is? Zoom. Slide. Zoom. Slide. Zoom. Slide. Half a turn. This marker is always going to say half a turn. Three angles and a triangle, no matter what triangle you've got, always up to 180. I can't believe the marker. How can I believe the marker? In fact, how do I even know what straight means? I mean, I, part of me says this is not straight, but when I'm walking the Earth, this feels straight to me, but when I look back from the moon and see what's going on, it doesn't look straight. Uh-oh, I think everything is now collapsing in my brain. I don't even know what straight means anymore. I don't even know whether I can believe the mark or not. I do not know the angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. Everything's falling apart. What am I gonna do? Oh, all right, well, the thing I'm going to do right now is clean the board. And I'll be right back and let's talk about what to do about this. See you in a moment. All right, 
The way out of this brain-hurty philosophical pickle is to be absolutely honest about what we like to believe, what we choose to believe. In fact, doing mathematics is all about being absolutely honest about what you're choosing to believe. Now, when I have a ruler and I'm playing on bits of paper or screens and so forth, I like to believe when I draw a line like this, I like to think that's straight. I'm not quite sure what straight actually means, but I like to think like I have something in my brain that says things with rulers are straight lines. When I'm walking outside, if I start walking south, I feel like I'm walking on a straight line. Now, I might do it for like a minute, definitely straight. Do it for an hour, still feel straight. Do it for several days, I might actually be like starting to do some curvature if I'm looking from the moon, someone watches me from the moon, but to me it feels straight. So when I'm on the earth, I would feel like lines that go directly south or directly north or directly east or lower some great big circles, they're the straight lines in that particular geometry. All right, so we feel like we have some notion of what straight is. Very intuitive, very loose. We don't know what it means. But here's what we're going to say. We like to believe. We like to believe that the mark is telling some truth, at least on straight lines with bits of paper on screens and so forth. So here's what we're going to do. Definition. I'm going to make it a definition. I'm going to declare what I'm talking about. We'll say geometry is flat if we can be sure, if we can assume angles and triangles add to 180 degrees. That that's what we want to believe. We want to believe our mark was speaking some truth earlier on. That's the truth we want to believe. So we want to believe our fundamental belief, fundamental belief that our school geometry is flat. What we study in schools typically is actually going to be flat geometry, that we are allowed to believe that angles and triangles add up 180 degrees. We're allowed to believe in this market, what it's saying right then and there. Now, of course, not all geometry is going to be flat. In this spherical geometry, here's our notion of straight line, and clearly the angles in this triangle, we cannot assume they add up to 180. In this case, they add up to 270. So the geometry on the sphere is not flat geometry. But we like to believe the geometry we do, that we're going to be studying here in this particular course, like most schools do, is going to be flat geometry. We're just going to assume it's a fundamental belief that our geometry is flat, that three angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So I didn't really know how to get out of my pickle about what does it mean, straight mean, can I believe the marker? But all I'm going to say is, let's just play the game, let's be really honest and say we want to believe this is true, so let's just say we're believing this is true, what are then the logical consequences of this? And bingo, we're now at the story of geometry. And this actually has some good historical precedents too. So let me clean the board and talk about what a famous fellow 2,300 years ago did in this regard. Back in a moment. Let me introduce you to Euclid. He was a geometer from about 2,300 years ago living in Greece and he is perhaps the, he's known as the father of geometry because he was the most deepest thinker probably of geometry of all time maybe. Phenomenal. This fellow must have been playing with geometry for decades before he realized I think we're really just assuming some basic ideas in geometry and everything else actually follows just as a game of pure logical consequence. In fact, he wrote a 13 volume series called The Elements and they have become the best selling math book of all time. In fact, they're the number two best selling printed book of all time in human history. Can you guess what number one was? Anyhow, so this is phenomenal because he actually showed the way about how to use logical power of deduction to deduce truths about the world, about mathematics, and so forth. Absolutely amazing. He set together scientific thought, the power of math mathematical reasoning. So he actually based his geometry on 10 fundamental beliefs, just 10 little beliefs. He realized everything follows from assuming we believe these 10 things. Well, actually, it turns out he missed some beliefs. He was actually assuming some other little things along the way that he didn't notice at the time. So in about the late 1800s, mathematicians said, actually, you missed a few other things. You missed only 18 more. So actually, all of geometry can be based on just 28 beliefs. Pretty small. That's amazing. But he too, Euclid, realized there's something special about what we believe about triangles. We like to believe they have straight sides. We're drawing triangles with straight sides. And we like to believe those three angles add up to 180 degrees. So he realized there's something special about flatness as well. But he didn't actually take this, the flatness assumption as a starting point. He went a slightly different belief on triangles, how triangles behave. So let me show you his fundamental starting point geometry on the matter of triangles. So he said, okay, imagine you have a pair of lines 
da -da -da -da, like that. And you just have another line crossing like that. Now there's lots of angles to be seen in this picture. He says focus on two angles inside the lines on say the same side of that crossing line. He says, okay, I'm gonna believe something about this picture because it actually does relate to triangles in his mind. He said to himself, okay, let's make this a fun fundamental belief. If these two angles add up to less than 180 degrees, they're less than 180, then he says, we're gonna believe that if you kept going on this line, doo -doo 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 -doo, they'll eventually meet up and make a triangle. So he said, my funda fundamental belief about our geometry is that if two angles on one side of a crossing line are less than 180, then we can be sure we can keep going with those lines and eventually make a triangle. Great. Now, our fundamental belief was actually about triangles. That if we have three angles on a triangle, we like to believe these three angles add up to exactly 180 degrees. That's what the marker was telling us when we were first playing. And then we started having some doubts about this moments ago. And then we said, let's make that our beginning belief of geometry. All right, so you could start it there. We started there. You could actually use his fundamental belief to prove ours. So he actually proved 180 degrees in a triangle. If you believe this, then you have to believe 180 degrees in a triangle. And actually, you can go the other way around. You could take our proof, our belief, and then prove you could claim that these lines will eventually meet to make a triangle. So these are equivalent starting points to geometry. So the geometry we're studying is not actually usually called flat geometry. We like to honor this incredible work of Euclid, and people call it Euclidean geometry. Most books will start here with some sort of basic belief like this. It's called Euclid's fifth postulate. It's sometimes called the parallel postulate. Some people sort of phrase it in terms of parallel parallel lines instead. He didn't actually use the idea of parallel lines, he just actually used this idea. But really it is, it's a way to get at what we believe about triangles, which then can be used to believe things about triangles. All fundamentally true as a beginning starting point about being honest as a mathematician. What do you want to choose to believe? And then what are the consequences? And welcome, welcome to Euclidean geometry. This is great. So our next issue is, We've definitely got a marker in our hand. Our marker was telling us 180 degrees in a triangle, which is now matching what we choose to believe about geometry. So the question now is, how often, when can we believe the marker? Or at least when can we be inspired to believe things the marker might be saying? So let's do that next lesson. Let's play with the marker some more and see if we can actually understand when it's speaking truth, given our beginning assumptions now. Back in a moment.